Academy Award nominations. His newest score is for the Steven Spielberg directed adventure movie Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Among Williams' movies are E.T., Superman, Jaws, Star Wars, Close Encounters, and Raiders of the Lost Ark. Now, as we see scenes from those films, listen to the musical themes the whole world knows. has carried his musical theme from Raiders of the Lost Ark over into the new movie, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I asked him if he composes at the piano. I use the piano a little bit for composing, but really not very much. I sit at the piano and maybe play a few notes to check the pitch of my inner ear in a very quiet room. I'll play a phrase a little bit, but, but uh, I write instrumental music or try to. So you sit down and with a pad and a and paper path, yeah. and you write the music and you hear it inside your own head. Aided by the piano, if I, if I'm, if I wander, if my ear, ear is imperfect and I've wandered off, I'll check it. But if not, I can sit for hours quietly and scribble, not always happily away, but hopefully. Do you jump out of the bathtub and say, Eureka, I've got this great theme? I wait for that feeling. But it, uh, it really doesn't come. I have to sell myself on the idea. Play it over in a lot of keys, orchestrate it, work with it, look at the film and sort of sing it to myself. When Steven Spielberg comes to you and says, I want you to do the score for Indiana Jones, how much information about the film does he give you? A lot of people will offer a script. You ask particularly about Stephen. Other directors will, will give you a script. I try not to read a script because it, it, it suggests too much to the inner eye. I'd, I'd rather see it in a, in a more kind of, with a clean slate, just walk in the room and see the film. Uh, I will look at it and, and... In other words, he calls you and says, I want you to save time, I want you to do Indiana Jones, and I will show you the movie with well, the dialogue but no music. I'll show you the movie when I finish shooting it. Come see it when it's done, when we've had a first cut, it's fairly well edited, and we'll look at it together. That's usually the process. And then we talk about where we're going to put music in the film, and just as importantly, where not. And uh, we can then take any isolated sequence that's going to be accompanied by, by music and, and discuss all the details of it. Should it be loud here? Should it be soft? Should it be quick? Should it be slow? Should it be pretty? Should, should it be electronic? Vocal? Choral? Will it be atmospheric? Will it be even audible or not? Will it be something that will accompany the wind but be softer than the wind but just be there to make the wind sound like wind but also magic, scary maybe, or a warm wind that invites and seduces, uh, tricks and artifice of all kinds that we can conjure. John, can I have a fast resume on your life and career? Very quickly, I began playing piano at age eight and studied fairly seriously uh, until I was in my mid-teens when I shifted into a kind of high gear of musical study. And I was interested really in first piano and second orchestration. I used to orchestrate as a kid for no real reason. I bought books on orchestration and became fascinated with that and would write little arrangements of tunes for, for uh, kids in school and junior high school and high school. And, uh, would be fascinated when it would work and sound right. And uh, uh, I, because my father was a professional musician, I, I was introduced to good teachers. I had good teaching and, and uh, um, studied uh, as, as a young as a youngster fairly seriously. In the 1950s, when I when I went to California, uh, the, the film studios maintained staff orchestras in those years and there was there was an opening for piano at columbia pictures so i auditioned for that and one and i was there for two years as a member of the orchestra and that was the first uh, chance i'd seen if, or had really to, to see the process of people conducting an orchestra while the film was running
suppose you were a critic 50 years from now and you had to go back and pick out the beacons in John Williams film scores what are say two of the beacons that you wish would be remembered that I, I'm glad you used the word wish because I, I, I would wish something would be so little of anything ever is and whether or not it deserves it I, I, I wouldn't want to comment but if, any, if I could wish that anything would be, I think probably Close Encounters, some of the music in that picture, I, I like a lot. And I love the film a lot. I love what it said and uh, what it suggested, if not promised. And, and uh, some of that feeling in the film, I think, found its way in some of the stuff that I put together for it. Perhaps that one. The last 10 or 15 minutes of it, where there's a thread of when you wish upon a star in it, just suggested here and there. I don't know if it, you've noticed it or anyone else ever did. The music that accompanies the, the leaving of the little uh, space visitor, uh, when he comes out and touches his uh, people that he meets, and they go back into the ship, and the door is closed, and the ship goes up. In short, the music after the communication of the machines, the orchestra accompanies the, all of the rest of the film. I suppose maybe 15 minutes or maybe as much as 20 minutes of it. That's played orchestrally from that point on. That's the music it has in it. What I what I feel so so uh, good about. A week-long series around Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom continues tomorrow with the leading lady, Kate Capshaw.